bends. It all starts from your base. You can't bench a thousand pounds or fourteen hundred with a weak back. <laughs> What do people want to hear from you the most? Mostly, well, the, mostly it's how do you train? How do you make these things work? How the fuck do you do that? Is most is what it comes down to. Like how how do you bench in a single ply that heavy? How can you put almost fifteen hundred pounds in the bar and not be obliterated? Stuff like that, or the you know the classic ones. How what do you do for back? What do you do for triceps? Stuff like that. I, those are the most common questions. Sometimes I get really good philosophical ones. I can't quote any at the moment yeah. that are really good. Well, let me flip some of those and say, not what do you do for your back? What should the average person who's asking you this question do for their back? Everything. Like, such as? Such as train like a bodybuilder. Define so, that a little bit more. Train like a bodybuilder. I mean, like, hit your back from multiple angles with multiple movements heavy weight or do you like you know if you training a bodybuilder would mean more like uh doing higher reps like mm -hmm. four to five sets of like eight to ten more like hypertrophy stuff like that do your do your shrugs do your rows your t-bar rows pen lay rows i'm saying rows quite what's a bit. your feeling on the intent are you more worried about them just throwing the weight or should they train it with a slower tempo and contraction and I, full range of motion i feel like back a lot of times you see guys especially newer athletes you know they train back and they're just chucking the weight around they have huge biceps they're getting a bicep pump their arms mm -hmm. they, they're flat back there's no back development whatsoever so you do you do have to train with intention of like squeezing learning how to not just chuck the weight not starting a fucking lawnmower with the dumbbell and mm -hmm. stuff like that actually working the muscles as intended you know, you, you wouldn't do that with a bench. You don't do that with a squat. Well, some do. Well, yeah. There's always <laughs> those those few. Yeah. But, yeah, back training is just something that I, I've always done. It's never been developed the way I want until these last couple of years. I, When I was in the military, I realized that my, my back is not it. It needs to be developed. So I actually had three back days per week. Well, then, what made First off, what made you realize that? Just by, like, visual at first, I'm like, I got no back. Okay. You know? I've always I've always desired that, just that that look, that mm -hmm. the V taper and the huge fucking traps that, like, touch the ears. Mine aren't there yet. I'm yeah. trying. Um, and just realize, I think also just, like, my bench progress. When I started training back more, my bench started going up. Okay. I'm like, okay, I need to keep doing this shit. I was doing three back days a week, mm -hmm. averaging about 100 sets of back per week. How did those back days look? Were they the same or did each change? Each one was different. There might, I, I might do one movement on the first and third day that's similar, mm -hmm. but each mm -hmm. day was different. Um, was for, one biased towards vertical poles and the other one horizontal? or Kind, uh, kind of a mix. Mm -hmm. uh, now, right now, I have a what I call a back thickness day and a back width day. Mm -hmm. I was doing one back day for about the last year. Um, I'm starting to realize that's probably not enough. I'm not doing enough volume. I'm I need to work my back more than my front. Mm -hmm. That's kept me injury free. That's kept me moving forward. So I'm now doing two back days a week, a thickness day and a width day. Um, but once I brought my back up to par, or what I felt like it was up to par, okay, three days is good. I'm going to reduce that to two days. So two bench, two back, maybe a lower-ish body type, just for the sake of adding mass and strength. And then that eventually led to one back day a week, two bench, uh, like a wrist and forearm day and like a shoulder day and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an accessory, all the weird shit day. Um, that's, that's, I think bench, aside from, you know, sans equipment, but I think bench is built from the back and the triceps. Mm -hmm. I, so I put triceps first and it's, it's just, it's so overused, but like it's, it all starts from your base. You can't bench a thousand pounds or 1400 with a, weak back mm -hmm. that's what's in contact with the pad that's what you're pushing from very, very basic philosophy on that let's, let's the same thing with triceps mm -hmm. we already talked about the intent mm -hmm. so we covered that so with the people who are asking not you sure. what should they focus on for their triceps uh mostly like the free weight type everybody likes to do the push downs they're yeah. easy they're they're not hard to do 
but that's exactly it. You have to do the shit that's hard. It's hard to do dead stop floor extensions with like max weight of like set to five. That's really mm-hmm. fucking hard. That it's uncomfortable on the elbows. That's what you need to do. Your heavy dumbbell extensions. Dumbbell extensions, I think, get to a point like you mentioned how like the dumbbells get longer and the range of motion just isn't there. So I think dumbbells are more kind of limited. Um, but yeah, just like the shit that's hard. Uh, I often refer to that feeling on the, like that, that soreness as being mm-hmm. kind of like a shearing force on the elbows. You don't want to overdo it and get injured, but you, you want to hit those movements to hit the back of the elbow, uh, that tendon across the elbow, all that mm-hmm. stuff I learned from Ryan Canelli back in the day. Um, you know, just the hard stuff, the free weight stuff, uh, the dead stop stuff. Um, I see oftentimes with like the, the movements that don't break up the eccentric concentric chain that your normal, like your JM presses or your extensions. Yeah. Um, I see the tendency to like use that rebound to really get the weight moving. I like doing movements from a dead stop, like being on the floor, dead stop on the floor, like a deadlift for the triceps. Yeah. And you're moving the weight with nothing but muscular contraction, no momentum whatsoever. What would be your thought then on a dead stop bench from a low pin? Uh, that's it's more so I've done those equipped I've done them raw yeah and raw again I don't give a fuck about that shit so yeah. I started doing dead stop presses with like equipment on like slingers not like a full shirt really like it that that's it's causing me to yeah a you're breaking up the chain but you also have to fire correctly it's teaching you how to like in the bottom of the lift how to extend out of the yeah. bottom a lot of a lot of value with that as well all right just be clear for the listeners you're still unracking and lowering Yes. You're not starting. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. I, I'm treating it just like a traditional yeah. bench. The only difference is the arms are raised up. Mm-hmm. I don't do like a full touch dead stop. It's like an inch or two shy. Maybe like mm-hmm. two different levels, inch, two inches. All right. Whatever. So it's not off pins. It's just you stopping. Then. No, it is off pins. Okay. Okay. I'm setting the pins up high enough to where the bar stops yeah. two to three inches shy. Say. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a, a, a very um, a, you know, obvious stop and then firing and learning how to extend out of the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, I like doing those. Floor pressing is more or less one of my m- most most prevalent, like most used bench accessories these days. You keep your legs straight or bent? I bend them. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't, I mean, maybe like half Z's sometimes, mm-hmm. like partway bent or not all the way mm-hmm. full out. Um, it's just how I like to do it. I know mm-hmm. some people say that's the wrong, but again, it's not a contested lift. Yeah. I'll do it how yeah, I yeah, want to yeah, do it. Yeah, that's a good point. You know? <laughs> Like, oh, that row was crap. That's bad form. There's no no such thing as a row competition. Yeah. Like barbell row competition. If I feel it, I'm making my back stronger and growing, then what does it fucking matter? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I That's re- restoration and recovery. So say your forearm starts to get beat up. Uh-huh. What do you do? How do you treat that? That's I do ev- everything. Good. I'm trying. There's, there's probably more I could do. Uh, I don't know. I, we've pinpointed it that we think it's this brachialis that's causing... Uh, oftentimes what Jericho's explained to me is that the site of the pain is not the source. My most like reoccurring thing is the pain right on top of this bone right here on the inside of the forearm. Mm -hmm. I talk about this like every single time I do a podcast, I talk about this forearm pain. So to get it to loosen up, I mean, so I'm not going to work on this area. It's what's above it getting tight. That's pulling. So I'll scrape it. We'll massage gun it. Um, heat, cold, heat, cold back and forth. What really changed the game initially was the cupping. I did I did two cups for 20 minutes, and mm-hmm. the pain fucking went away. Now it's almost like my body's getting used to the cups, so now I have to find other things to do. Um, Tom was talking to me about uh, magnesium oils to mm-hmm. add hydration directly to the area. So that's something I'm going to get into. Uh, I'm going to work with him. He wants to work with me on, like, keeping my body healthy Mm -hmm. and like working on these things i have no mobility so a lot of this shit's coming from no mobility starting from like my back to my shoulder to my front so it's it's, yeah i don't do mobility or stretching and i probably should 